Starting the candle business or any business can be a very exciting and rewarding endeavor. But if you want it to last, then you have to take some strategic actions in those first few months of running your business. And don't worry, if you are already down that road and already in business, you can take this three month period, do some course correction and make sure you're going the right direction. Now, many new business owners believe that most of the prep work is done the months leading up to your launch before you actually launch day one. But the truth is that first few months in business is still really the beginning stages of launching your business, even before you've had one sale. So really think of it more like all the work you've done to this point has been preparation for your first three months. Now the first few months, they're gonna be hard, that's normal. In the famous words of Henry Ford, when everything seems to be going against you, remember that the airplane takes off against the wind not with it. Welcome to the channel, everyone. My name is Wade with Black Tie Barn. On this channel, we talk about candle making, running a small business, and other related content. Thanks for stopping by, and uh, please consider subscribing to the channel if you are interested. And a big thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. All right, so before we jump in and cover what to do in these first three months of business, if I cover anything in this video that you have more questions about, or you would just like more information on, more of a deep dive, just let me know in the comment section. I will follow up and address those in a future upcoming video, because this is more of an overview roadmap of what to do. All right, so month one. Actually, it's probably important to know where we are at this point. So let's recap what you probably should have already been doing up to this point. And if you haven't yet, that's fine. This is a great time to start and play some catch up. All right, so what are some things to consider before you start your candle business, or if you've already started things that you should still be focused on? Number one is to conduct some sort of market research to understand your customers' wants and their needs and their preferences. For example, you wanna make and sell candles or make and sell lotions and soaps, but what specifically are you going for? Are you trying to do a mass appeal? Are you trying to go for a, spe a specific niche or theme? Highly suggest you check out a recent video I posted about starting a niche instead of a theme and really just the difference and explanation of both. That will get you going in the right direction on this topic because one of the most critical points of any business is establishing this from the very beginning. But to quickly overview, are you looking for mass appeal, kind of economic line of candles? Are you going for a luxury feel? Or are you going for something very theme-based and niche-based like uh, like candles for gardeners or candles for uh, you know man cave or something like that? This is an important time to really think about and plan this because it will set the rest of your, your business up uh, with more of a plan going forward. It's also important at this stage to figure out what differentiates you and your candles, your products uh, from others in the industry. I mean, the candle making world, just like really any industry these days, can seem saturated. And that's because there's a lot of businesses selling candles. There's a lot of businesses selling soap. There's a lot of businesses making movies and restaurants. And there's every industry has a lot of competition, but that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. What makes a business work is, is learning how to differentiate between that competition. So what makes your products different or unique or special? What makes you different, unique or special? Your story, your branding, anything. This is a point to brainstorm, get a piece of paper or a whiteboard and just think about everything that sets you apart, even if it's just a little bit, because that little bit of separation you can really leverage to drive your brand home. Speaking of brand, this is also the point to define your brand identity and create a brand image. So we're talking about your colors, uh, a unique brand, logo, a name, everything to kind of drive this niche, this theme home that you've worked on in the previous step. Branding should be one of the first things you do, not an afterthought. It might seem like customers are buying products, but they're really buying brands. You just happen to also sell a product that they want. So you want customer loyalty and the way to do that is through your branding. And a great way to do that and build that loyalty is to create a brand story so you can tell your customers who you are, what you offer, what makes you unique, and why they should purchase from you. And part of branding is creating a consistent visual style across all of your marketing materials, your packaging, your website. Everywhere you're present with your business, you want some consistent branding so that you're recognizable to your customers now and in the future. Now, before you get to your first month of really being in business, you probably should have already had a business plan in place, or at least some sort of business plan and goals and objectives. Keep in mind that a business plan is a living document. It's a living concept. It's going to change and evolve over time, but you want to have something from the very beginning to make sure that you, you know, you have some sort of actionable plan, actionable steps to take you from where you are to where you're going. If you just kind of wing it, it's going to get overwhelming. It's going to get stressful. You're going to feel like you don't have any clear direction and it just makes everything a lot harder. And part of doing a business plan is not just about the branding and everything we've talked about so far, but also about 
determining your startup cost. That could include materials, supplies, equipment, marketing costs, really anything that might cost you money up front to get going. And don't worry on this channel, we dive into all of that as well. So definitely check out the channel, subscribe, check out the other videos, and they're even organized by different playlists to help you establish and, and move along with your candle business. Now this next one's gonna seem a little more difficult or challenging at first if you're a brand new business owner, but it's nice to be able to create some sort of sales forecast to estimate your revenue and expenses. And again, that can sound difficult because if you're just getting started, how do you estimate your revenue? Like you don't necessarily know what to expect, right? Expenses on the other hand can be a little bit easier. So determine what are necessary expenses that you just have to have, like overhead costs, for example. That could be software or tools that you use, um, a certain you know, website hosting, things like that. And then there's a lot of costs that are variable costs. They're tied to making your products. So as you make more products and sell more products, those expenses go up. What's important to do though, is at least have some type of goals and objectives that you're trying to hit and then base your forecasting off of those. And the whole point of this exercise isn't to be a measuring stick or to see if you've passed or failed, so to speak. It's more about to prepare you. So if you have an idea of what your expenses are related to that projected income and then you launch your site and you start doing well and orders start coming in, you know how much more money you might have to spend to keep growing, to keep up. And so this entire exercise is just to give you some more insight into understanding the relationship between your cost and your profit. So early on in your business, you should be doing some type of planning to estimate, this is what I plan to price my candles at. Here's the cost to make everything. Here's the overhead. Here's my profit margin. And again, on this channel, we go into a lot of detail on those topics. And it's not near as complicated as it might sound, but it is important to get started on it as soon as possible. And one final thing before we dig into your first month in business is to make sure that those goals are action oriented. They, they need to be objectives uh, with, with specific goals so that you know what steps to take to hit those goals. So they can't, they shouldn't just be very vague, like I want to be successful. Like, what does that mean? It needs to be, I want to launch my website. By this day, I would like to try to hit this many sales by the end of year one. I would like to have this many uh, candle fragrances in my collection. So specific objectives with actionable steps to reach them. So we've caught up. We've done all the prep work to get us ready to start our business. Now let's start going into month one. So what actions should you be taking or should be completed leading up to or during your first month in business? Well, clearly you need a way to sell your products. So obviously, one of the first things that should be done is to make sure you have a website created or an online store or some type of online marketplace that you're using to sell your products. If you're using your own website like Shopify, that is completely fine, or you can use a marketplace like Etsy, for example. Choose a website builder or e-commerce platform or whichever you method you wanna go, is its preference is totally up to you. Just, just make sure you pick one that fits your needs and your budget. Uh, there are pros and cons to something like Shopify versus Etsy. If you're interested in a video, let me know and I will do one uh, that kind of breaks down some of the pros and cons of each. But Etsy is going to be quicker for you to get started, but you're going to have more control over Shopify. So yeah, it's just do a little bit of research, pick one. You can always change later. You can do both. But uh, the important part here is obviously you need some place to sell your products online. And if you don't want to start with an online shopping experience and you simply want to start with craft shows, that is okay. But I would still highly suggest you at least have a website. Even if you don't want to sell from them yet, you want a place to start putting your products and getting your brand and your name out there, start building some search engine optimization, some awareness about your business, because it can take some time for people to start becoming aware of your business and your products. And so the earlier that you can get them online, the better off you'll be. You can always start selling online later, but at least have an online presence. Now, speaking of creating a online presence and website, make sure that you create product pages that have high quality images, uh, detailed descriptions of each product. You really want this to stand out. So spend a lot of time on this aspect. You want good quality photos, good product descriptions. You can make them catchy, you can neat, you can make them very simple and modern. It doesn't really matter what style you're going for. Just make sure that you put some effort into it and that they're high quality. One of the first things that will kill your conversion rates on your website is if customers show up and they see something that looks unprofessional or sloppy or that just didn't have a lot of time invested into it. That will be the first thing that makes them click away before they've even put anything in the cart, they'll be gone. So spend some time here. If you, this isn't your strong suit, then uh, reach out to some others, some freelancers, go to fiverr.com. You can check out some free classes on Skillshare, which again, they're linked in the description below. All these resources out there these days can help you create simple, good, high quality product photos with just normal phone and cameras that you have at home, as well as some uh, great resources on creating simple product titles and descriptions. Also in month one, you should really be leveraging your social media accounts and promoting your products hard online. Determine which social media platforms you want to start with and 
Leverage those 100% as hard as you can. I would not recommend starting with everything. I wouldn't start with a Facebook, a TikTok, an Instagram, a Pinterest, uh, just keep going, right? There's tons. I would pick one or two and focus heavily on those because your first three months should have a good social media launch plan. And uh, I plan on doing a video of what a good social media launch plan would look like. And you wanna be feeding that monster every day, multiple times a day for your first few months in business. That is how you're really gonna get some momentum. At the very least, create some kind of content calendar to help you plan your social media posts, whether that's through Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. Now, which one would I recommend doing? I can't really do that. It's gonna depend on you, what you're already good at. Uh, what you prefer. It's going to depend on your branding, the whole feel you're going for. I would just say start with whichever one or two that you want to start with. Also, part of setting up your online business, if you are going to be doing that, is to make sure you research and select a shipping uh, delivery service for your products, whether that's candles or anything else. And this is where a lot of new business owners struggle is trying to figure out how to handle shipping. If that is a topic you want some more information on, let me know in the in the comment section below. There's a lot of ways to go about this. However, I think most people probably overcomplicate it and there are ways to keep it simple and manageable and you can always learn and adjust as you go. But if this is something you want more information on, let me know in the comment section. But in short, you're trying to provide shipping and delivery cost effective to your customers, but something that's not crushing your margins as well. So there's options like including free shipping on everything or creating a flat rate up to a certain amount and then free shipping over that threshold, or you can just pass through shipping entirely to your customers. There's a lot of ways to do that. There's a lot of hybrids to each. Here's some positive notes though when it comes to shipping. The simpler that you keep your product lines and options, the simpler shipping is. So the more options you have, shipping starts getting complicated because you have all these different sizes and options and weights and boxes. If you sell one size or two sizes and that's it, shipping becomes a lot easier to figure out. And again, if you need some help on that, let me know in the comments. Now, if you're on Shopify, for example, I would suggest leveraging both uh, USPS and UPS. Both of those are gonna be options for your website. Uh, and then I just tend to go with whatever is the cheapest for the customer, which is also usually the cheapest for you, the seller. If things are under a pound, they can ship first class. If they're between one and three pounds and not going an incredible distance, then post office uh, priority mail is usually the cheapest. Or if it's heavy, large, or going a long way, then UPS might be the best. But here's the thing. If you use something like Shopify, the shipping service that's built into Shopify is gonna help you figure that out. You don't have to try to figure out which one's the best. It's going to do that for you. That's the reason why choosing a good e-commerce platform is beneficial. But again, keep your options simple so you don't have to carry near as many box sizes and near as many packaging options. All right, so before we continue, I know that that's already a lot of information and you can watch this video multiple times, take some overall general bullet points. I have other videos on the channel that go into more depth on some of these, ask more questions in the comments. But if anything so far that we've talked about seems overwhelming or that you're not sure really how to do, like branding or website design, I wanna take one quick minute to mention Skillshare, the sponsor of today's video. They have classes on every topic you can imagine, and you can take as many as you want. There's, there's no limit at all. I've been using Skillshare for years. I mean, anytime over the last few years, I've wanted to learn something new that I don't have any experience in, or I need to do something for my business that I don't have any experience in. One of the first things I do is I go to Skillshare and look for a class and learn how to do it. That could be social media, that could be website design, that could be bookkeeping, taxes, starting a business, the legal parts, it really doesn't matter. Uh, there's just tons of options there. In fact, this will seem sort of random, but, uh, I've always heard that if you can grow a garden, you can grow a business, or maybe it's the other way around. But either way, I happen to stumble across this class called Indoor Gardening, Growth, Houseplants, Veggies, Herbs by Ekta Choudhury. It's about growing an indoor garden in a confined space. And that concept might seem sort of familiar to you new candle makers that might be using your kitchen at home to make your products. It's like Skillshare knows us too well. So I thought, what the heck, I'll check it out. And that's the kind of the beauty about Skillshare is it doesn't have to be about something for business. It can be about anything. Anything you wanna learn, you can check it out on Skillshare. But I get it, if you're not interested in learning about gardening in a confined space, then you might want to learn more about some of these things we've talked about directly in this video so far. For example, setting up your website. And if that's the case, then check out this video by Mimi Chow called Build Your Site and Shop, A Beginner's Guide to Shopify and Website Design. Uh, she covers Shopify overview, picking a theme, designing your store from your homepage to your product pages and other custom pages to even important Shopify settings and configurations. Or maybe your struggle will be creating and building a business brand. Then check out one by Rebecca Minkoff called Build Your Business and Brand, translating your passion into a plan. She discusses focusing on what makes you and your business different, creating and unified branding, scaling your brand, all these things that we talked about that you should be doing leading up to your first month and during your first month. So I would highly suggest checking it out. And remember the first 1000 people that click on the Skillshare link in the description below 
gets a free one month trial to Skillshare, unlimited access to any class on any topic. All right, so it's month two. You've done a ton of work to this point already. You are really hitting the ground running. You're taking your business serious and you're wanting to keep it going. Month two is a lot of tweaking, fine tuning, scaling, and growing. First, let's focus on more of a marketing plan to reach your customers. So month one was all about social media. Let's hit it, let's hit it, let's promote, let's make brand awareness. Month two is creating a more, I would say, structured marketing strategy. So you're creating blog posts, you're creating videos, you're creating some user-generated content, you're having some uh, customers provide visual feedback, either through photos or videos of using your products. And again, you can leverage social media to do that. You're creating more content on your website, talking about your branding, your story, your products. You're focusing a lot on your uh, product pages. This is a time to take everything you already have in place and really start to breathe more fire into it. At this point, you may already consider running some social media ads or some paid offsite ads through like Facebook ads, Google ads, and so on. Now, this is totally optional. And think about ads in a sense that, yes, it's going to cost you money to run ads, but they can kind of boost and kickstart your progress. And the thing about ads is, yes, there is some inherent risks. They might not be successful and it might be sunk cost by the time it's all said and done, but the reward is nice as well. So this is something that can wait and it is absolutely optional. But if you're considering running some ads, then make sure you're choosing wisely and not spreading yourself too thin. So focus like one platform, Google or Facebook, for example, um, or if you're on Etsy, if you want to run any Etsy ads, uh, then this would be the time to start experimenting with those. Because another advantage of running ads besides potentially getting more sales is that you learn more faster about your products and your conversion. Because when you run ads, your products get tested throughout the market a lot faster. And so you're going to get more information about your products and how well they're doing faster. Now, again, you are paying for that. And if ads isn't something that interests you and you want to still leverage your free resources and social media, then consider doing a, a referral program or a customer feedback program where maybe you reward customers with discounted products for their feedback. Or like I said, a referral program where they get discounts by simply referring your products and your website. There is no right or wrong method when it comes to uh, marketing your business. There's just lots of different ways to do it. And the only way to really know what's going to work for you, for your business, is to try things and see what works and then double down on that. It's going to differ for everyone. So unfortunately, there's no do this and it will work. Um, it's something that every business has to evaluate for themselves including me. Now, pricing strategy is also important. You want to make sure it's competitive and profitable. The first thing to do, we talked about earlier, is to determine your cost of goods sold, which is the cost to make and sell your products. And that is going to wildly differ for everyone. As you are a new maker or a new business owner, your costs are going to be higher than someone that's been in business for a while because they're buying their materials in bulk and high volume, and they've really dialed in and got really efficient with their processes. So it is normal for your cost of goods to be much higher as a new business. And then the key is, is to take that information, figure out what you need to do to at least make a profit margin, but also how to price your products so that it's competitive. Because if all you're worried about is a certain margin, you might have a hard time selling your products if they're overpriced. However, if you don't focus on your margin at all and you're just trying to sell something competitive, they're not gonna make any profit. So it's, uh, it's about a balancing act and figuring this out. You can always adjust prices later. Uh, that's very normal, businesses do it all the time. Uh, but it is important to know your cost of goods from the get-go. You can't stay in business if you're losing money. It is very normal early on for your business to not be making a lot of profit or any profit. And you might just be breaking even or reinvesting back in your business, which again, is totally fine. It's a great way to scale your business and to get some momentum. But you at least need to know what your costs are so that you know how to price your products. One tool that is great for that is CraftyBase. I have an overview video in the description below and uh, several other videos that show different ways that I use that product. But it helps you determine your cost to make all your products. It tracks your recipes. It can help you with price guidance so you uh, know what to price your products at to get certain margins. So definitely check out CraftyBase if you're interested. Another thing that I'd be doing in month two is to create a product catalog or, or a brochure to showcase all of your products. Yes, your website's going to have that, but it's also a great time to start building some uh, physical marketing momentum. So if you have some catalogs and flyers done, you can drop them off in your local retail and boutique shops. You can uh, drop them off at coffee shops. You have something physical to hand if you're dropping off samples or if you go to a craft show or a vendor event. Having something physical along with your online presence is really powerful, especially if you plan to get into wholesale 
those retailers are going to want some type of catalog or line sheet to see what you have to offer and some prices along with it. But the brochure is also a great way to highlight what makes your brand different, what makes your products unique, uh, to showcase your products without having to physically tell someone about your products. You have your online presence, you've got sample products, and you've got marketing materials like brochures and flyers and catalogs. You can start going around to your local businesses in your community, which like to support other local small businesses, by the way, and you can leave this information with them. It only takes one of those being interested to really set your business up. So take this part seriously and really take advantage of that potential opportunity. That essentially wraps up month two. It's all about fine tuning and tweaking things that you've learned so far, whether it's about your costs and your pricing or about your marketing, and then creating more of a cohesive plan and really turning the right wrenches. Now, you've done a great job so far. Prep, month one, month two, what actions should you be doing in month three? If you haven't already done it to this point, it's important to start building relationships with your customers through email marketing campaigns. So if you don't already have a newsletter in place, highly suggest getting one. You can use a service like MailChimp or ConvertKit, and that way you can communicate and engage and build more of a relationship with your customers. You can let them know when new products are launched or when products are back in stock, uh, more information about your brand and your story about who you are, maybe the story behind why you developed a certain fragrance or a certain product. It is the number one way to stay engaged and tied with your customers. It's also a great way to share you know, discounts and promotions with your customers as you approach the holidays and Black Friday. Otherwise, they might just forget. We're all flooded with information these days on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok. There's just information and, and marketing it thrown at us all the time. So stay relevant and in the forefront of your customers using a newsletter. And depending on the goals and objectives of your business, we talked about this earlier, but this also would be a time to start participating in more local markets. You're trying to expand in your reach and your overall brand awareness. So if you've only lived online to this point, this would be a time to maybe step out and start doing some holiday shows, for example, or if you've been doing craft shows to this point, consider branching out a little bit more. You might have to get a little bit of help, but consider basically expanding your reach because you're in the growth momentum stage. This is the part where you're going to be really busy and spend a lot of time pushing your business because you're trying to get out of the blocks fast. So think about your location, your target audience, research local markets, fairs, anywhere it would make sense for you to participate, and then get really good at doing those. Not only will it give you great practice and get you more confident about your products and learning to talk about your products, but it's a great experience. You learn so much in a short period of time by doing craft shows. Not to mention, if you're doing this in local areas and communities, your name starts to be fresh and relevant in your own community. And that's a great way to grow your business. It's much easier to grow your business in your local community than it is online. So if you can take advantage of that and really grow your local presence while also working on your online presence, that's a two-headed monster. And then the last thing for month three, and really this is not unique to month three, you should be doing this every month for the rest of your business life. And that is to monitor your sales, adjust your strategies as necessary. And again, we've talked about in some other videos ways to do this and to figure out what's working and what's not. So definitely check out one of those videos as well. Think of your business as a living, breathing organism. It's going to grow and change and you've got to grow and change and adapt with it. You should be learning and gathering feedback. You should be watching sales, see what is selling, what is not. Consider getting rid of the bottom 20% of products that aren't performing that well and replacing with new ones as time goes on. You want to stay fresh, stay relevant. Don't get too stale and just keep taking your business and incrementally making it better a little bit at a time. You will learn so much in your first three months so don't miss that opportunity. Embrace it and use what you learn. You will also make mistakes in your first three years in business. But as Richard Branson said, the most important thing is to be ready and willing to learn from mistakes. Because guess what? We all make them. If you're not making any mistakes, you're probably not taking enough risks. Check out one of these next videos. We've got a ton of new content coming down the road, so please consider subscribing. Also, I have a newsletter for candle makers in the description below. Check that out and sign up if you would like. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Oh, and don't forget to check out Skillshare in the description below. As a reminder, the first 1,000 people to click that link get a free one-month trial, unlimited access to Skillshare. I'll see you guys next time.